Today, our champion, Debbie Toby of Lemonster, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Sharon Rossett of Greenfield, Massachusetts, on Candlepin Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candlepin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and we're glad to have you right here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, for three strings of Candlepin Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. Now, each of our bowlers will take home a permanent souvenir from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. One for the winner, and of course, one to show that she was a runner-up on the program. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 goes to the winner, half of that $350 goes to the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously if they tie in a string, we split it at $25 a piece. I have two certificates here. One of them is from the Super 7 Tire Dealers, and that will go to today's runner-up. It's a $50 gift certificate. This is a $50 gift certificate, the white one, from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. That must be earned. It will go to the bowler with the most marks. We have other opportunities to uh, put a little more change in the pockets of our bowlers. I'll tell you about that as the program goes along. Most of you know about it already, but let's talk to today's bowlers and meet our challenger. Okay, Sharon, now what I want to know first of all is how come you haven't come to see me sooner? Been trying, just haven't made it yet. <laughs> because I look, you know, I'm mean, after three years in a row, 86, 87, and 88, huh? Yep. The state doubles champion? Mm hmm. And uh, on the World Candlepin Tour and everything. How many roll offs have you been in and didn't quite make it? Not many, really. I haven't really tried that much. Well, that explains yeah. it then. Okay, I understand. Debbie, I know knows how tough you can be and she has one thing in mind last last week you know she faced her idol and and uh, and defeated her and that was a big experience for you it certainly was Stacia Zernicke of course we're talking about and now what she wants to do is be our champion for the next year right that's right I'm hoping <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready you don't think that she wants to take it away from you do you uh, well, she does. <laughs> <laughs> right okay we'll get underway and see how it goes right after this Getting underway, leading off, our challenger, Sharon Rawson, Greenfield, Massachusetts, making her first appearance on our show, starts with a half Worcester left. She has a league average of 117. How's that for a comeback? Eight is the drop on the spear. She has a high single of 184 and a high triple of 420. Very impressive numbers. Not quite two in a row. A 10 box. Now our defending champion, Debbie Toby of Lemonster, Massachusetts, with a league average of 110. High single 173 and a high triple of 440. Three pins on the left side, the two, four, seven. She also has the nine pin and wood across the two and four. Too far left. Debbie's on for the fourth week. Having defeated in succession Janet Pock, Cheryl Jubert, and Stacia Zernicke. I mentioned that her league average is 110. That would translate into a 330 three string total. But she has far exceeded that for us, having rolled in succession a 391, a 347, and a 370. Three pins to pick up for a spare. Four, seven, eight. And the eight did not go. Our challenger, Sharon Rawson. Eight pin drop, leaving five and the nine. With wood, it goes. Sharon is single and works as a supervisor at Hallmark 
Color Labs. She's representing the French King Lanes in Miller's Falls, Massachusetts. Then hit, but she came back and through the back door picked up a few more, a drop of six. She's left with the one, three, eight, nine. And she got three of them. And the piece of wood rolled back and just missing the one. Here's a 10. <clears throat> so an excellent start for challenger Sharon Rawson. Now our defending champion, Debbie Toby. And I'll remind you that Debbie is runner-up in the 1988 Massachusetts Bowling Association Open Ladies All Events. Also, runner-up, 1988, the NBA Open Ladies Doubles with Joyce Frost. And she was runner-up to today's challenger, Sharon Rawson, who teamed with Marianne Kelly. An eight. She's got the four horsemen right side plus the five and nine. Six big pins over there and how many? All but the five went down. So our defending champion, as we pause for the first time to check on the scoreboard, finds herself in a 16-pin deficit after four boxes of the first string. It is challenger Sharon Rawson, 54, and defending champion Debbie Toby, 38. Sharon Rawson, today's challenger. Lane two here at the fairway, first string. Boy, she gets a lot of action. Some backdoor action there, almost made a spare. She has another 10. And so far, Sharon has not had a box in which she did not knock down all the pins, either a 10 or a mark. So close to a strike. The seven pin rocked back and forth, but would not go. Another mark. Now, Debbie Toby, our defending champion. And she is in a position where she has to work a little bit here. Some pressure on. One, three, six, four, seven, no wood. That ball just got away. It hit the football line and as she was delivering it and uh, she never got the full pendulum swing to come out to hit towards the number one and the number three. Another eight. Eight pinned down, the two that are still standing are the uh, six and nine. A Couple of pieces of wood. She just as soon, I think, have them out of there, the angle that they're at. Can she make it? Yes. So she broke through with her first mark. Now our challenger. And a 
that one went off to the left and very thin hit and she picked up just a couple of pins. Well, we'll add one more three. It fell for her, so she's left with a spare leave over on the right hand side. Three and six. He has it. Excellent string going for today's challenger, Sharon Rawson. And now our defending champion, Debbie Toby, has a markup, so this is a bonus ball. Two full spread eagle, just what she did not need. She came right in on the head pin. And when uh, they are not going down, th this is the sort of thing that happens. When you're on one of those hot streaks, and she was with the three previous ones where she got lots of pinfall. And winds up with a seven. Just missed the head pin that time. It's, it's often mentioned, of course, that particularly about baseball being a game of inches, but it certainly applies here, too. Just a fraction more to the right, and she has a pocket hit, and instead, she chops wood. Sharon picks up six more. 102. And what she has to pick up now is three, six, ten plus. plus and she got it. They're both excellent candle pin bowlers, and one is hot and one is not right now. And when you are hot, they fall. Four that time, and she has four horsemen left side, plus the five and eight. One twenty five. Now Debbie has to try to do something in these final two, but not to the point where she is really pressing. But when things like that happen, as the ball is released too soon, you just can't help but start to press. It is so easy to talk to oneself and say, no, I can't let this get me. I have to settle down. But as you see the pins falling and the numbers going up on the other board, the other side of the board, you can't help but starting to push a little. Ten. Eighty-four. Once again, missing the head pin, and she's left with that same split over on the right-hand side of the four horsemen plus the five and nine.
A nine. So an extremely disappointing start for our defending champion Debbie Toby and obviously Sharon Rawson has to feel good about what she has done so far just as Debbie did in her three previous appearances. Score after one today's challenger Sharon Rawson Greenfield Massachusetts 125 and defending champion Debbie Toby of Lemonster Massachusetts 93. Debbie Toby has begun the second string with a pair of tens, has 20, as Sharon Rawson comes up now. And if, uh, if you tuned in late, merely say that she got off to a great start. She had five marks in the first string and wound up with a 125. Now she's got them scattered all over the deck there with the one, seven, nine, ten. What a shot! What a shot! Which uh, reminds me that the high-low jackpot is worth $950. Just three. Still has the one, two, and five. One, two, five triangle. Still there. So there was no profit per se in the sense that she wound up with 20 pins for two boxes and so did Debbie Toby. And therefore, it's still a 32 pin lead, which it was coming in here. One, three, six, four, and seven. Nope. It's an eight box. Ten pin would not go down, so she's left with four seven on the left and ten over on the right. A couple of pieces of wood in between. This is uh, particularly one that has to be waited for because it's right in the center and will be used, probably. Nope. Sharon Rawson. Everything except the seven. Just three out of there this time. Seven pins to work on, including the head pin. And she did not get that one. Six. So our defending champion, Debbie Toby, has picked up a few pins here, a couple. She was trailing 125 to 93 after the first, but right now after four boxes of the second, 
She leads 37-35. Defending champion Debbie Toby on the line. Fifth box, middle string as we come to the halfway point of the match. And she gets a hammer. Been a long time coming. For a moment, she had the good right pocket hit, and it looked as if it could be. But she got eight on that first ball and is left with a five and seven with two pieces of wood. Mm, yes. She made the spare. Sharon Rawson, our challenger. Four, five, and seven. Four and five still there. A nine. Now the 32 pin lead has been cut to 19. Four horsemen right side plus the seven pin and a piece of favorable wood rolling up against that seven. Well it eventually I guess is going to roll up against it if it ever decides to stop. Rolling back and forth right now. Here she goes. Seven and ten still there. Seven and ten still there, and again, a little bit of rolling wood. And she waited and waited, but still winds up with an eight. So that has uh, opened the door for Debbie to come back a little. Let's see what happens. Six, four horsemen left side. Ooh, big miss, big, big miss. And it's a seven box. Three marks in a row, as you know, any combination of strikes or spears in the same string will establish a bonus of $50. Then each subsequent consecutive mark in the same string is worth $50, as long as they can keep it going. The only bonus money so far has gone to Sharon Rawson. That was $50 for winning the first string. Three, six, ten on the right. Seven and eight side by side on the left, and everything went except the seven. Ten. Sharon, today's challenger. Nope. A lot of body English, but it, it didn't help. It's a 10.
But she picked up three more and her lead is now 14. Four horsemen left side. And in the back the nine pin not an easy one to make. She knew as soon as she delivered the ball that she was not going to get that head pin. And it's still there. Debbie Toby trailing by 13 right now. And she lobbed the ball. Called by our lob line judge and referee Ralph Stewart who sits right on the lob line and that ball just flew out there. So this is the second ball which she's rolling as the pins have been reset. Leaving two. It's uh, an eight box. One, seven, eight, and ten with a cluster of wood, three pins kind of spread out in back of that number one. And it's a seven or a one oh five. And today's challenger has herself a legitimate spare leave. Four and seven with wood. Bear in the night. Five. Nine. Ninety five. So Debbie was able to pick up ten of the pins, but she still trails by twenty two at the end of a couple. And I'm sure she's at the point where she just can't believe what's happening to her, particularly after the way she bowled for the last three weeks, where she was, as I have already mentioned to you, up in the three ninety, three seventy one. So here it is now after two, and it is challenger Sharon Ross in 220, defending champion Debbie Toby, 198. Third string and our challenger, Sharon Rosson, leads it off. She leads in the match by 22. One, eight, nine, with the wood in back of the one. It went. It went. Didn't like that. Just three. Mm -hmm. 
Little wood chopping again. She still has four pins standing. One, five, seven, ten. We saw her make an unusual spare previously, which involved the one, seven, ten, and another pin. I already told you that the high-low jackpot is worth nine fifty. The home viewer jackpot. 150. And the only bonus money so far has been the $50, which has gone to each bowler. One for winning the first and then the second string. Debbie Toby faced with 22 pins by her challenger, plus a 22 pin lead. but one. Six pins still there. A ten. As you know, because we tape several weeks in advance, sometimes of when you actually see it, if I read something to you, give you some report, it may seem quite out of date by the time you actually hear it. I'm referring to the first stop of the... Nope, she didn't... Or is she going to get it? No. On the first stop on the 1988-89 World Canavan Bowling Congress Pro Tour, out at the Academy Lanes in Bradford, and the top five ladies were Paula Truman, Karen Farrer, Marianne Kelly, Kathy Finkelstein, and Chris Coaches. And for the men, it was Al Johnson, Brian Uphold, Bob DeBadges, Dan Gallant, and uh, Craig Holbrook. Sharon Rawson up now. Just one pin. That's what she's looking at. The eight pin in the back. Top score for the men, by the way, was 1220. Excuse me, 1381 for the women, 1220. And that eight is still there. Ten. Four horsemen left side. One, two, four, and seven. She has it. Beautiful hit right in that one two pocket. Now Debbie Toby down by 24 pins and facing a 10 and a spare. Just what she needed. A strike. First ball missing the head pin. She winds up with five. The seven pin rocked, but it's still standing, plus the four horsemen right side. Just missed the head pin, and so the fill is eight, and she still has the one and the six standing. One, 
One is down, so it is a nine. Now we'll wait to see what the fill will be for Sharon before we take a look at the deficit. Sharon has been fortunate because she's had several fills of only three on spares. In fact, four times. But she's had enough marks, so it hasn't made that much difference. By the way, the Massachusetts Bowling Association has selected the six men and six women who will compete in the International Cup Tournament that will be held in Douglastown, New Brunswick, Canada, October 22nd and 23rd. Next weekend, selected from the highest placing men and women in the open events at last May's state tournament, these bowlers will represent Massachusetts, trying to bring back the International Cup to Massachusetts. This prestigious event will send some of the Candlepin's best bowlers from Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick, all Candlepin country. NBA will be paying all expenses, including the flight, the food, and the lodging. Competition will include individual 10-string singles matches for both men and women. The teams will bowl a total of 15 games to determine the winner. Matches start Saturday afternoon, October 22nd, continue Sunday morning and afternoon with a wind-up banquet Sunday evening where the International Candleman Bowling Association Cup and Championship Rings will be presented to the winners. Naturally, we wish all the representatives from Massachusetts good luck and great bowling at the International Cup in New Brunswick, Canada. The ladies, well, it's Marianne Kelly, Maria Mozzarella, Debbie Toby, whom you're watching right at this moment, Tony Marie Baldinelli, Joanne Rosano, and Jackie Sterner. And for the men, John Thomas, Joe Ashline, Det Klein, Joe Tavernese, and Brian Kroll. Good luck to all of them. Next week in New Brunswick. Nine. Just four boxes left now. There's that 1710 again, and as I said, the high low jackpot 1710 worth 950 today. Nine. The NBA's newest promotion for league bowlers is about to begin. It's a season-long over-average competition conducted during league play for men and women. Prize money will be awarded at the house level as well as the area finals next May. The winners will share in a $25,000 jackpot. The over-average bonanza is designed for all league bowlers over 18. Because its format is over your average, anyone can win. Bowlers should check with their local bowling center for information. The Bonanza will be starting October 16th, running through April 29th at all participating centers. This is great. This is something for the everyday league bowler. And starting tomorrow. Pair of nine. So now, Debbie, down to four boxes. Got a little break there, and she's left with a spare leave over on the left. Four, seven, and eight. Spare. In the completed boxes, she's down by 19. 
She needed a big fat fill there and she didn't get it. Just four. So close to another. A 10, which is one more pin. The lead is 13. Two boxes to go. And this young lady is in the lead. Nine pins down. She has the 10 pin to pick up for a mark. Sharon nails it with a spear in the nine. Five. Unusual alignment with the four, five, seven, eight, ten. But she uses the word and makes another. What a pretty spear to wind up with. Seven more. Debbie Toby, final two boxes. No, no mark there. A 10. While I have a brief moment, I would like to thank Anna Santola of Watertown for what she sent to us and also the nice words from Elizabeth Miller of Alston. Thank you. And for Anna, I'm taking care of handing those things over to the bowlers who participated in our championship show. And I'm sure they'll appreciate it. No, there was not to be a mark in the uh, last box. She had spare, then 10, 10, and now we'll be going for another 10. Debbie went across the football line. She's all right, but uh, lost a final pin and winds up with a 307 and congratulates the new champion, Sharon Rawson. And the final totals, the 26 pin difference, Rawson 333 and Toby 307. 150 in the home viewer jackpot. That goes to somebody who is either way, 10 above or 10 below, 640, which was our total today. But when I draw the card, even if it's nowhere near that, that person will be rewarded th with these prizes. A Barbasol gift set of men's toiletries, including Barbasol shave cream, the original beard buster, and Barbasol glide stick, provides effective, long-lasting protection for a lot less money. And an Ames flower and garden tool set. This four-piece set includes a flower and garden shovel, cultivator, bow rake, and garden hoe with a 42-inch handle. You'll love the smaller, more compact size. 
and the Hypenex plant food gift set contains fine quality Hypenex care products. Grow bigger, hardier plants with Hypenex plant food. Hypenex makes house plants grow like crazy. Okay, let's find out. 640, that means anywhere from 630 to 650 wins $150. This one comes from Kenneth Lord, West Ossipee, New Hampshire. 751 is the guess, so it goes to 200 next week. $950 if you can knock down those three pins, Sharon. You get first try at it. And our Hilo jackpot. Okay, Debbie? No, it was not to be. All right, Debbie, would you stand over here, please? Uh, and Sharon, you just get up right behind her, please. First thing I have to ask you, you fell down on the last ball. Did you hurt yourself? No, just my pride. Well, I guess we can understand that. Uh, but listen, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. No. Look, the last three weeks, 391, 347, and 370. So you had a bad day, right? You know, you can't win them all. Right. Be back. You get the $50 gift certificate from, from the Super 7 tire dealers and uh, the trophy from the Ace Trophy Company. $350 for being the runner-up and $50 for winning that middle string. Great. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. I had fun. And Sharon, how about it? You are going to be our champion for a whole year. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start, huh? Five marks in the first string? Wonderful. Thank God for the first one. The big trophy from the Ace Trophy Company. A $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. $700 for winning and $100 in bonus money. And I'll see you next fall, oh. okay? Thank you. Thank you. And next week, the men return, and it will be Tom Ulsta who will be defending his title against Reggie DeLine of Needham. I'm Don Gillis. I hope you'll be here. Will you? Thanks. See you then.